The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day in the year of our Lord, 2015, in the month of December, the date being August 16th. Our Lord comes up once again, a fresh day, a new day, by the renewal of His grace upon us. By His tender, loving kindness of mercy being bestowed upon the sinful mankind. That it is not a big thing that Lord should be glorified at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone instantaneously. But the big deal is, after believing in the Lord, what have you been? What are you doing? And where are you going in this church age? Every believer being thumbed out as Alec Nicetesus, new spiritual species unto Christ. Every believer being given the great privilege of being indwelled by the Trinity and followed by the polytheism of privileges as well, what we have noted. With this great work, with this great reality, with this great truth, just believing in the Lord is not a big deal. After believing in the Lord and receiving this 40 absolutes in that 39 irrevocable and one revocable absolute. We being neglected because of our ignorance, arrogance, negligence, our moron minded attitude of to have the revival of the first century, which is very monstrous. The first century revival of legitimately not speaking in tongues. But taken care by that Angastramutas demon, demonic activity, following through the trends of miracles and healings which they have not done legally after AD 70 as well, very perfectly to come. Not 1970, but the first century 70, 0070. This has become a more mystery among the minds of the Pentecostal crowd. Then the Montauk mystery, what the people could found in the year 2009 near a beach. And these people are not able to understand what it could mean to stay in the reality of Bible doctrine. And not just there they stand, they further spread their wings more than the gangrene, more than the cancer. And people love to follow that cancer rather than to sit and be disciplined in learning the word of the Lord. People want to think we are justified, we are justified, but they don't want to think that they are being justified in a manner that is only right in the sight of God. And if our Lord graciously bestows one more day and we are alive over here on this earth, Lord needs a plan from you. Lord expects a work from you. A work that cannot be accomplished until unless first you grow up to the standards of maturity. You can't marry a baby. You need to marry an adult woman who is having the thinking a response. Exactly, Lord will not marry to us until unless we have grown up. so that he can talk to us the love affair described in Song of Songs, so that he can come and kiss us every day. And our beloved is now in heaven, but we are here on this earth to remember him, to be occupied with him, 
to be learnt of him. And he has not left us helpless. But rather our Lord has given the greatest help of all time, the indwelling trinity of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The author of the scriptures. And the purpose in this present age, what we are going through in this dispensation of the church. That we need to learn, irrespective of your wretchedness, after believing in Christ, being still alive into sarcasm, the carnal flesh, and constantly grieving, squelching, and lying to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then to our Lord permanently indwells in you. When you could compare to the Old Testament time, as truly they would have been set free. So truly, Lord, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would have left them after completing their work, which was an endowment. And they were no longer to be abided over there. And if it were a king or a prophet, since it is an abiding given by Lord God, the Father, to stay till the purpose could be achieved, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would be endured unto them, like the clothes that we wear. And after that work is done, it would have lost. It would have gone. That's why David prays, Do not take away thy Holy Spirit from me, O Lord. But now we in the church age, we need not pray that prayer. Neither we need to pray the prayer, come upon us and fall down upon us like the principles what they follow in the Acts book of Acts. When they laid down their hands, the Holy Spirit came upon them mightily. That was to the baptism of the Jews. But when we have in the Gentiles, Cornelius, it is not recorded that Peter kept hand upon the people of Cornelius so that the Holy Spirit can come down upon them. But these morons, they want to lay down again the hands being taught in the first Timothy 4. That was a recognition of the pastor teacher gift now after the completion of canon. The defunct spiritual gifts being thrown out. And if it is a great mystery for the people to solve this Montauk, monstrous one which they could found before the beach, greater than that mystery is now among the crowds and the minds of the so-called Pentecostal realm. At one end, if it was popery destroying the people till 15th century, now it is the Pentecostal crowd destroying the people in this present century. And now though we have been given a man raised from the dead, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm praying for us in the great discourse of the Gospel of John, chapter 13 through 17, the church age prayer epistles, particularly the origin of the prayer. The man came from the dead and he said, Father, sanctify them by the truth. And no other means for us apart, that, apart from that to be going and involve ourselves in emotions and to tell, Lord, we have been greater in emotion. We have done greater works in emotion. But Father, with subject humility, we tell, Father, thy truth alone we learn. And furthermore, Apostle Paul, who have been to the third heaven, even he tells, when he's emphasizing the epistle of Ephesians, the next six more years when he's going to stay alive on this earth, the importance to form a pivot, the importance of the client nation of God, the importance that emotion is nowhere related to the things pertaining to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather telling it is the reality of the word that he takes and he teaches to you. And furthermore, declaring for us in Second Timothy in the dying declaration of Apostle Paul, guard the doctrine that has been laid down in your hands, because you will be called for the diamonds from my witnesses between the God in Trinity in heaven and the people over here on this earth, whether he have thought these words or not. And in First Timothy 5.17, it is very clear to the point to tell, especially those who labor in word and in doctrine, then they have double honor in Christ. 
And what is it we are waiting for, dear brethren, in this church age? What is that we are not able to understand the reality of the word in this church age? What it is that we are spending our time where our time have not to be spent? And why is it that you not to be looking upon the things pertaining not related to Bible doctrine? It is a pure plan of Satan to allure you, to obscure you, to make you an illusion from the reality of the word. And to give your mind upon those things which it is not at all required to stay your mind there. Because positionally you have been made superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. But experientially doesn't want you to grow up, to fully realize, to fully explore because of the earnest deposit given to you. When you are there in a true fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The true fellowship is what? Rebound, confession, because he is faithful and righteous. And whatever my Lord does to deliver you, it will be in a righteous manner. It will be in a right way. It will be in a just way. Because a just for the unjust people. A just God for the unjust people. And we need to follow the same methods of the just one. We cannot go in our unjust means and tell, Lord, I bribe you with my 10% of tithe. I bribe you with X, Y, Z things. I, bri I bribe you by doing this, by doing that. No. Lord is not interested in your sacrifices, in your X, Y, Z trends at Hosea 6.6. 6. But our Lord, if he's been interested, is interested whether you have learned the doctrine or not. The same principle in Jeremiah 9.23 and 24. If you boast, boast that you know that the Lord is been in you when you have learned his righteousness, when you have learned his knowledge, when you have learned his understanding, when you have learned his wisdom. That is what the word of the Lord tells to us very clearly. And what is happening today? Not interested to know the truth. That is what it is happening today in our church. Pulpits have lost the true purpose of the church, the called out one ecclesia assembly, to raise missionaries and send them. So that these missionaries could be very mature enough, like William Carey. And to become a William Carey, he spent nearly six to seven to eight hours a day, every day morning, studying the word of the Lord. But today, this man did not even know what is the word of the Lord pertaining to the mystery doctrine of the church age, pertaining to this unique spiritual life, pertaining to the things about this protocol plan of God given for us. And it's a great mystery, a mystery that has been not made known to these people because they have been blinded to know the reality of the word. Dear brethren, ponder over these things. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.